First, I will draw the structures that are supplied by the celiac trunk. Here's the distal end of the esophagus and the fundus of the stomach here. The stomach is supplied by the celiac trunk. Greater curvature of the stomach. Pyloric region, then the duodenum. First part and second part of the duodenum. Then to continue the esophagus and the lesser curvature of the stomach. First part of the duodenum and the second part of the duodenum here. Attached to the lesser curvature of the stomach and first part of the duodenum is the lesser omentum. And this lesser omentum is attached on the other side. It's attached on, onto the visceral surface of the liver. Now I will draw the visceral surface of the liver. On the visceral surface of the liver, the gallbladder is located. So this is the, the cystic duct, neck, body, and fundus of the gallbladder. And then here, the continuation of the cystic duct. At the hilum of the liver, there is the right and left bile ducts that unite to form the common hepatic duct and the common hepatic duct unites with the cystic duct to form the bile duct. So this is the bile duct. The bile duct will be located in the free border of the lesser omentum and then passes behind the first part of the duodenum. This is the cystic duct here. The other structure that is supplied by the celiac trunk is the pancreas which is a derivative of the foregut as well as the liver. Both of them are derivatives of the foregut so they are supplied by the celiac trunk. The head of the pancreas is located here within the C-shape of the duodenum. So this is the region of the head of the pancreas, the region of the uncinate process here is located. Uh, the pancreas is a retroperitoneal structure and lies opposite the posterior abdominal wall. The head of the pancreas which is located within the C-shape of the duodenum, is located at a lower level than the rest of the pancreas that extends behind the stomach, behind the lesser omentum. And uh, usually the pancreas lies obliquely in the posterior abdominal wall. So the region of the neck, body, and tail of the pancreas lie at a higher level than the head of the pancreas. So the part of the pancreas can be seen above here. Of course, this is against the posterior abdominal wall behind the lesser omentum. This is part of the pancreas. This part of the pancreas, which is shown here, it is related across the lesser omentum with the visceral surface of the liver. And then the pancreas continues uh, behind the stomach and uh, the tail of the pancreas will be related to the hilum of the kidney. Here is the region of the hilum of the kidney, of the left kidney, and leaves the kidney in, toward the spleen in the lying or renal ligament. The other structure that is supplied by the celiac trunk is the spleen. So this is the position of the spleen here. That's the diaphragmatic surface of the spleen, here, the visceral surface, the anterior border is characterized by the notch. The spleen has a, a hilum, this is the region of the hilum of the spleen, where structures pass in and out, as well as the structures include mainly the splenic artery and the splenic vein, um, some um, nerves and as well as the tail of the pancreas. This part of the visceral surface of the spleen is related to the stomach and the spleen communicates with the um, stomach by the 
gastrosplenic ligament. Now, the other part of the spleen here is related to the kidney. The kidney is located most posteriorly, the left kidney, in the posterior abdominal wall. I will draw the kidney as dotted. It lies within the bed of the stomach and is related to the visceral surface of the spleen. Okay. This is the region of the hilum of the kidney where the body um, of the pancreas crosses and then will be reflected from the kidney to the spleen um, through the lying or renal ligament. Now to continue the view, I will draw the crura of the diaphragm. This is the site of the right crust of the diaphragm. As you can see, it passes toward the um, esophagus. Esophagus passes through the right crust of the diaphragm. And this is the left crust of the diaphragm, muscular fibers of the diaphragm. The right crust of the diaphragm is crossed anteriorly by the inferior vena cava. So this is the inferior vena cava. It's a big vessel located posteriorly and to the right. I'm not going to draw this side of the vessel because here it is crossed by the portal vein. So let's draw the portal vein. It's a, the portal vein is a big vein that is formed behind the neck of the pancreas and then it um, passes through the free border of the lesser omentum in front of the inferior vena cava. So this is again, this is the remaining part of the inferior vena cava. Of course, in between them, there is an opening, the epiploic foramen. The portal vein provides the main blood supply of the liver, but not the oxygenated supply, because the oxygenated supply comes from the hepatic artery that we are going to show and describe in a moment. So this is the portal vein. Between the two crura of the diaphragm passes the abdominal aorta. This is the region of the abdominal aorta. is the continuation of the descending thoracic aorta. It passes behind the crura of the diaphragm at the level of T12 vertebra. Immediately as it passes into the abdomen, it provides a short wide trunk. And this is the celiac trunk. The celiac trunk is um, the artery that supplies the foregut from the distal end of the esophagus, including the stomach, the first and half of the second part of the duodenum. Embryologically, the boundary between the midgut and foregut is located midway along the second part of the duodenum, where the major duodenal papilla is located. The celiac trunk also supplies the derivatives of the foregut, and these are the liver and the pancreas, as well as the spleen. The celiac trunk has three large branches. The smallest of them is the left gastric artery. The left gastric artery passes on the posterior abdominal wall across the left crust of the diaphragm and then leaves the posterior abdominal wall to pass into the lesser omentum between the two leaves of the lesser omentum along the lesser curvature of the stomach. The left gastric artery supplies an esophageal branch that supplies the distal reaches of the esophagus. This esophageal artery is important in that its accompanying veins, they drain into the left gastric vein that drains into the portal vein. In addition to that, the esophagus upwards is drained by the azygous system of veins which drain into the superior vena cava. So these veins that drain into the superior vena cava and the veins that drain into the portal vein, they anastomose at the distal end of the esophagus and this provides a site of portal caval anastomosis. These veins might become engorged and distended in cases of portal hypertension because of this anastomosis and this is what is called esophageal varices. The left gastric artery as it passes along the lesser curvature of the stomach it supplies gastric branches toward the anterior and posterior surfaces of the stomach. These are the gastric branches and it is going to anastomose with the artery that comes from the right side and this is the right gastric artery. The second branch from the celiac trunk which is in fact a big artery this is the splenic artery. The splenic artery is located in the posterior abdominal wall passes along the superior border of the pancreas 
now I'm going to draw it as a dotted because it is located behind the stomach you can see that it is characterized by a tortuous course then it passes across the kidney and from here it will gain access to the lino-renal ligament that make it reach the hilum of the spleen here uh, it is located in the lino-renal ligament together with the tail of the pancreas and together with the splenic vein the splenic vein is expected to be present behind the pancreas at a lower level than the splenic artery the splenic vein is not tortuous and the splenic vein will unite with the superior mesenteric vein behind the region of the neck of the pancreas to form the portal vein. This tortuous splenic artery provides the main blood supply to the uh, neck, body and tail of the pancreas by multiple pancreatic branches. One of them is a large branch that is called the arteria pancreatica magna. In addition to that, the splenic vein, as it reaches the hilum of the spleen, it will divide into multiple small branches that supply the spleen. Before dividing into splenic branches, it supplies about half a dozen of branches, small branches, along the gastrosplenic ligament to reach the fundus of the stomach. These are the short gastric arteries, about six of these branches. In addition, it supplies a larger branch that passes along the greater curvature of the stomach within the two leaves of the lesser omentum. This is the left gastroepiploic artery. As its name indicates, it supplies gastric branches along the greater curvature of the stomach. These branches are given on the anterior and posterior surface of the stomach. In addition to that, it supplies omental branches, epiploic branches, since the artery passes between the two leaves of the greater omentum. Remember, the greater omentum is suspended from the greater curvature of the stomach. So these are the omental or epiploic branches. And then the continuation of the left gastroepiploic artery will anastomose with the right gastroepiploic artery which I'm going to talk about in a moment. The third branch from the celiac trunk is the common hepatic artery. The common hepatic artery passes toward the right along again along the upper border of the pancreas and then it passes a little bit anteriorly to gain access to the lesser omentum and will ascend up toward the liver toward the porta hepatis along the free border of the lesser omentum. Here is the artery. It will divide into a right and left branch. You can see here the relation of the hepatic artery to the bile duct. The bile duct is located on the right side. The hepatic artery is located on the left side. Both of these structures are located in the front of the portal vein and the three structures, the triad, is located in the free border of the lesser omentum. The right hepatic artery has a small branch but important branch that passes behind the hepatic duct and supplies the gallbladder. This is the cystic artery. The cystic artery has a variable origin and a variable course but is usually located in this triangular area that is bounded by the cystic duct, common hepatic duct and superiorly by the visceral surface of the liver. This is the triangle of calot. Usually the cystic artery is located here. This is the main constituent of this triangle as well as a lymph node. The common hepatic artery supplies a branch that passes behind the first part of the duodenum. I'm going to draw it dotted because it passes behind the first part of the duodenum. This is called the gastroduodenal artery. The close relation of the gastroduodenal artery to the posterior aspect of the first part of the duodenum makes it vulnerable to be perforated by a perforating peptic ulcer, which usually affects the first part of the duodenum. If the ulcer is located on the posterior surface of the first part of the duodenum, the gastroduodenal artery supplies a pancreaticoduodenal artery, which is called superior pancreaticoduodenal artery. And this, uh, as its name indicates, it supplies the head of the pancreas as well as the duodenum. So there are some duodenal branches and pancreatic branches to the head of the pancreas, superior pancreaticoduodenal artery. And the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery will anastomose with an inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery uh, that supplies the distal part of the duodenum. Um, 
the inferior pancreatic or duodenal artery is a branch of the superior mesenteric artery. The superior mesenteric artery is the artery that supplies the midgut and the distal part of the duodenum distal to the major duodenal papilla is a midgut derivatives so it is supplied by the inferior pancreatic or duodenal artery a branch of the superior mesenteric artery the artery of the midgut in addition to the superior pancreatic or duodenal artery the gastroduodenal artery supplies the right gastroepiploic artery that passes within the two leaves of the greater omentum along the greater curvature of the stomach and this artery is going to anastomose with the left gastroepiploic artery again the right gastroepiploic artery has gastric branches that supply the anterior and posterior surfaces of the stomach along the greater curvature of the stomach and it also supplies the uh, epiploic or omental branches to the greater omentum so the gastroduodenal artery is named so because it supplies a gastric branch so it is gastro the gastric branch is the right gastroepiploic artery and it supplies a duodenal branch and that is the superior pancreatico duodenal artery the other branch of the common hepatic artery is the right gastric artery the right gastric artery passes between the two leaves of the lesser omentum along the lesser curvature of the stomach and it anastomoses with the termination of the left gastric artery and it supplies branches gastric branches along the lesser curvature of the stomach toward the anterior and posterior surfaces of the stomach and as i said it anastomoses with the uh, left gastric artery so the common hepatic artery provides the gastroduodenal artery and the right gastric artery now it's no more common it's only dedicated for the liver so it's called hepatic artery proper that courses in the free border of the lesser omentum and the hepatic artery proper now is going to divide into left and right hepatic arteries the right hepatic artery usually provides the cystic artery that passes behind usually it passes behind the common hepatic duct and now it is located in the um, calots triangle to supply the gallbladder it is also important to mention that the celiac trunk at its origin is surrounded by the celiac plexus and here there are also the celiac plexus contains celiac ganglia and uh, the plexus is sympathetic and parasympathetic plexus the parasympathetic contribution comes from the celiac branch of the posterior vagal trunk and the sympathetic fibers are uh, provided by the greater and, and lesser splanchnic nerves the abdominal pelvic splanchnic nerves in the celiac ganglia it is the sympathetic fibers that are going to synapse and all the sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers are going to be distributed along the branches of the celiac trunk to the lower reaches of the esophagus to the stomach to the um, first half of the duodenum and to the uh, liver these branches are going to be distributed along the arteries this is a celiac artery angiogram you can see here the catheter that has been passed from the femoral artery into the abdominal aorta reaches the abdominal aorta from the femoral via the external iliac then common iliac this is the site of the catheter and radio opaque material is injected into the celiac trunk you can see some of the branches of the celiac trunk this is the splenic artery it's a big branch and characterized by its tortuosity it's very clear the tortuosity of the artery the other branch is the common hepatic artery this is the common hepatic artery and here it continues as the proper hepatic the proper hepatic artery divides into a left hepatic and a right hepatic branch and you can see here that the 
right hepatic artery provides a small branch that is the cystic artery that supplies the gallbladder so this is the cystic artery the common hepatic artery provides a gastroduodenal artery here this is the gastroduodenal artery that passes behind the first part of the duodenum and the gastroduodenal artery provides a right gastroepiploic artery you can see this is the right gastroepiploic artery that courses in the greater omentum along the greater curvature of the stomach in addition to that the gastroduodenal artery provides superior pancreaticoduodenal artery this is the superior pancreaticoduodenal artery it divides into a an anterior and posterior branches that straddle the head of the pancreas and they supply the duodenum and the pancreas the anastomose with the inferior pancreaticoduodenal artery that comes from the superior mesenteric artery